Many of you won't have heard of Harry Harlow before, but a lot of you will have heard of Stanley Milgram. His experiments are very, very famous. This is another classic in the social psychology field. And we go back to 1963 and to the Eastern United States. And um, this announcement was placed in local newspapers. We will pay you $4 for one hour of your time. Persons needed for a study of memory. Sounds like a good thing to study. And no special training, education or experience is needed. So they're specifically targeting factory workers, city employees, laborers, barbers, um, construction workers, people who are unfamiliar with the university environment. They're specifically not targeting college students or professors. Um, and that really matters, as it turns out. Well, people responded to this, and the $4 was a degree of money, I suppose. And you'd be met, if you volunteered for this, you'd be met by a scientist in a white coat in Yale University, Ivy League University, big, big authority. So you're clearly in the role of scientific, and, and, and the presence of scientific greatness here. And then when you're met, you are uh, told that volunteers are being randomly assigned one of two roles. They're either playing the role of a teacher or playing the role of a learner. And what do you know, you learn, you, you, it turns out we flip a coin and you're going to play the role of the teacher. Um, in actual fact, all volunteers are going to play the role of the teacher. The learner is an actor, a stooge who's, who's acting the part. But you don't know this as you're taking part in the experiment. And you're sitting in a room with the experimenter, so T is you, they're the teacher, and E is the experimenter, the scientist, who should, should be wearing a white coat and looking very sciencey. And you're looking through a one-way mirror at the learner who's attached to electrode, because of a, a wrist electrode there, and you're going to, uh, the experimenter is going to uh, ask questions, memory questions of the learner. And when the learner gets things wrong, you are going to um, administer electric shocks. Isn't that nice? Here's the device that's used. Um, you can see the clearly ascending scale of voltage there. So we start off administering very small electric shocks and we go up to very strong electric shocks. No actual shocks are being used. The, the, the learner is in fact acting, but you don't know that. And this is very carefully choreographed. So that machine goes from 15 volts, which is relatively trivial, to 450 volts, which is pretty much lethal. Um, and there's a script arranged so that as you reach certain stages in this, the learner will exhibit certain behaviors. At 120 volts, the learner shouts in pain. At 150 volts, the learner asks to stop. At 300 volts, the learner pounds on the wall. If we get to 330 volts, the learner stops responding. And I stress again, this goes all the way to 450 volts. So the real experimental question here is how far will the teachers go? How far can we induce these volunteers to administer electric shocks to someone in the context of a scientific experiment? Now, the prediction was that about 2% of people are psychopaths, so they might go all the way. What they found was a bit more worrying. Uh, the prediction was 2%. They found that 65% of the teachers went to the maximum level. This is extremely worrying, extremely concerning. It should concern you. Um, other factors to be included here. Now, I keep stressing the, the dress, the white coat that the experimenter is using, the actual scientist, the fact that you're in a prestigious university, surrounded by the trappings of scientific authority, and the volunteers themselves are relatively poorly educated. They are not familiar with this environment and they're in one room together with the scientist. Now, conducting an experiment like this raises very severe ethical issues. This is tantamount to torturing your subjects. We're not dealing with monkeys here. We're dealing with men. And it should be said most, both this and the next example we're looking at in social psychology only traffic in men as if women didn't exist and the previous one harry harlow only worked with monkeys so here's a brief clip of a subject taking part in this experiment Nice one. Tame. Wolf, bear, dog, cat. 
Wrong. <coughs> Answer is bear. 240 volts. Next one, sweet. Right. No, you go back up to the beginning of that page and go through it again until he's learned them all correctly. Oh, no. No, I'm not going to kill that man. Do you mean i got to keep going up with the scale? No, sir. He's already there. I'm not going to give him 450 volts. The experiment requires that you continue. I know continue. it does, but that man is hollering in there, sir. As I said before, although the shocks may be painful, yeah, they're not but dangerous. I mean, he's, he's yelling in there. Start with blue, please, at the top of the page. Continue, please, teacher. Now, I hope you can see this is a very unpleasant experience for that volunteer. This is a form of torture, again, but not monkeys, but volunteers for a scientific experiment. In the required reading for this week, you'll see a ham-fisted non-replication of this. Look, suddenly women appear in the scene. Um, and the whole thing has been toned down to have much less bullying involved. Um, see what you think about it, but I think as an attempt, as a replication, it's absolutely horrendous. It's, um, it doesn't work. We need to be very careful when we draw serious conclusions from very little evidence and very complex evidence. Many aspects of the original study are not used in the replication. Um, anyway, so, so this is very problematic work. Why did it happen? That's the real question I want to ask. What were the social fears that Milgram's work was responding to? This is the early 1960s in the US. Second World War is not that long ago. Second World War ended in 1945. This work was done in 1961-62 and published in 63. And around that time in 61-62, there was a very famous and well-publicized trial going on of Adolf Eichmann, a very senior Nazi. That was in Jerusalem and he was hanged afterwards and it captured the world's attention. The Nuremberg trials themselves have been in 45-46. And the Second World War had traumatized humanity. Everyone couldn't understand how things had gone so severely wrong. How was it that an entire people seemed to have rode in behind an administration that was capable of exterminating six million people in ovens? How were, did the did the why did people accede to this? So this was a study of the structures of authority, and it was asking very very hard questions about the role of individual conscience an individual will when confronted with structures of authority. I think it's very, very bad science. We did learn something from it. Um, please don't believe that we learned from this that you can make people um, do whatever you like if you have sufficient trappings of authority. It's far more complex than this. I want you to see this as deeply flawed science conducted by psychologists who are responding to social fears and the fears are very, very genuine. So that's a theme we We'll be carrying on.